Hey guys, it's Adriel Hunter here, back with another video review on a video game. Now, I, the reason why I'm doing another video review is because, well, I had fun doing the special delivery review. Yes, it took way too long, it was a lot of work, but I think the final result was very rewarding. And I, so, I, so, I, so I decided to do a series called Andrew John 100 Reviews, and so I thought about what I should review next, and it was, and I, it was decided that I would do Ultimate Custom Night. Now, what is Ultimate Custom Night? Ultimate Custom Night is a point-and-click survival horror game published by Scott Cawthon and was released on June 27, 2018. The whole purpose of the game is to try to defend yourself against 50 animatronics from all the kinds of Finds of Freddy's games, using mechanics from previous and recent entries of the series. But the main objective of the game is to try to beat 50-20 mode, which has only been beaten by a few people. Now this game does have a story, but I'll keep it short. So basically, this game takes place directly after the events of Finds of Freddy 6, where the Scrap Animatronics and William Afton were all burnt up and sent to heaven. Except William Afton, per who was sent to his personal torture chamber by Golden Freddy and, and meant by his old creations and now has to pay for his sins for eternity. Now the story itself is simple, but really cool at the same time. But what about the gameplay? This is like the Super Smash Bros of FNAF, right? Well, let's dive deeper into it. As the game suggests, you're playing an ultimate custom knight from, from, char from characters ranging from, the all, from all kinds of FNAF games like FNAF 1, 2, 3, 4, FNAF World, Sister Location, and finally Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, or FNAF 6. You can customize them and- oh, forget it, you'll know how the custom night works. All the animatronics AIs vary in appeal. There are new ones, some slightly new ones, some recycled ones, and some that are completely different. In gameplay, instead of your usual cameras, you have three different types of systems, like the cam system, vent system, and duct system. There are a total of eight cameras in the torture chamber, and on your right has some devices that can help you survive through the night, like power generator, which makes your power last a little longer, silent ventilation, which makes the reset ventilation less common, heater, which makes your office hotter, power AC, which makes your office cooler, and global music box makes the music box that's in the kitchen sound off throughout, throughout the pizzeria. There are some more additions to the game too, but I'm not going to go into much detail about it, as they're pretty straightforward. For every animatronic that's set is worth 10 points, and the maximum for each animatronic that's up to 20 is 200 points. After you receive a high score, you get access to these, to these cutscenes that I'll talk about in, in detail later, like Toy Chica's high school years, and the Japanese style cutscenes for Freddy and Foxy. But that's not all. You can also use the points to purchase office skins which changes the style of the office from a specific game, like Fazbear's Fright, Sister Location, and Finds a Phrase 4. Which, I gotta say, these are a cool award, and it adds replay value to the game. And last but not least, like any other custom night, there are also challenges, which after B1 gives you a star for each. And after you receive points over 8,000, you get a little Freddy trophy. You get bronze for 8,000, silver for 9,000, and finally a golden trophy for 10,600 points. The gameplay that UCN offers gives you, gives you a lot of replay value, and it's just a lot of fun to play with. However, this game isn't perfect, and it does have its faults. Let me start with some of the, me the mechanics. The mechanics, as I said, vary in appeal. There are some that you, that you will love, some that you will like, and some that you will absolutely loathe, like Toy Freddy's mechanic. Oh boy, did Scott turn up in Toy Freddy's difficulty in this game. Toy Freddy was a very minor threat in Finds of Freddy's 2, but here, he's a freaking ninja in this game. Because if you make one minor mistake, he'll lose his game, blame it all on you, and jump scare you when you're least expecting it. And Funtime Foxy's mechanic is crazy. You, you need to use exact timing in order to check on, on his cove. Otherwise, she will immediately pop up on your office and jump scare you. I'm not saying that they're crazy in a bad way, they're crazy in a good way. I like that how some are unique, but there are some that I think could have gotten a, be a better role, S especially Bonnie. I can't tell you how disappointed I was when I saw Bonnie's role in Ultimate Custom Night. He only jump scares you if you look at the cameras, and therefore he just, he just disables your cameras. 
I'd say this is the most unfitting role for him. Bonnie went from the biggest power hog in Finds Phrase 1 to the easiest threat to avoid in Ultimate Custom Knight. And he's just been reduced to a distraction. I know that at the time when Bonnie's AI was created, Scott was about to, to exceed the data limit in Ultimate Custom Knight, but Bonnie is one of the main characters. He should have at least got a jump scare. I think what he could have done was have Bonnie jump scare you after you let him break your cameras too many times. And then like Toy Freddy, his chances of jump scaring you are very very random, so that way we would at least feel satisfied. In fact, Bonnie kinda helps you in most cases when Foxy is active. He keeps Foxy from poking his fat nose out of the Pirate's Cove. But oh well, at least his role was redeemed in Help Wanted and Special Delivery. Another character who was given a pretty unfitting mechanic was El Chip. El Chip was a pretty interesting character, I always thought he had a cool design, but when his AI was released, uh, it was a bit of a letdown. In, in gameplay, an ad advertising his restaurant, El Chip's Fiesta Buffet, would occasionally pop up with loud music playing you know, over it. The only way to get rid of it is to press enter. Now, I don't think the mechanic itself is bad, I just think it would have been more fitting for trash in the game, and El Chip could have gotten a way better role. But it doesn't end there. The last mechanic who that was kind of a letdown, or, or actually a mistake, was Funtime Chica. Funtime Chico was, once again, a cool character in FNAF 6, but had wasted potential in Ultimate Custom Knight. The best way to describe her mechanic in Ultimate Custom Knight is sneezy fan service. Smile! Well, good job, Scott. Not only did you waste potential for Funtime Chica, but you also pleased the dark side of the Fine's Phrase fandom. I hope you're happy with yourself. But beside those three mechanics, the, the, the rest are fine in my opinion. What else is wrong? Well, if I could be real with you, I did not like the cutscenes in this game. Specifically, Toy Chica's high school years. Not only is her design really ugly to look at, but these cutscenes are filler. They don't, they don't add anything to the story, and they're just the exact same thing. Toy Chica writes, it, writes something in her diary, she falls in love with a character, and she plans her way to kill those characters. That's it. Even the cutscene involving Steroid Foxy and Japanese Freddy are the exact same, and they don't add anything up. The only real cutscenes that I kinda liked were the Old Man Consequences scene and go the very last bit of Gone Freddy. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the last cutscene wasn't really much to look at, but at least there was no anime involved, and, it, and on top of that, it's got a sad tone, and it's... Alright, aside from the cutscenes, there's one more thing that I have to talk about, which is the biggest problem with Ultimate Custom Night. The jump scares. Five Nights at Freddy's is well known not just for its characters, but for its infamous jump scares. Now, does Ultimate Custom Night hold up to that recognition? Short answer, yes and no. The jump scares in this game are very inconsistent in terms of quality. Sometimes they could be decent, fluid, and sometimes surpass their original but other times they can be jittery, lazy, or just utter trash. A good example of them being jittery is Foxy's jump scare. Yes, Foxy's jump scare here is a little better than, than his from Finds Phrase 1, but it's way too over the top. We're to the point where it looks like he had 50 cups of coffee with a side of Red Bull. However, his jump scare is the bare minimum of bad. The really bad jump scares in this game are the shaking still image jump scares, which is where their character models shake on the screen, but nothing else moves, and it just looks really lazy and unpolished. Now I know that Ultimate Custom Night is a big game, and so Scott would have to cut some corners with the game and make it to make it run properly. However, that doesn't change the fact that these jump scares are, are still pretty bad. But the ones that are really bad are the Phantom Animatronics. The Phantom Animatronics had some of the best jump scares in Five Nights at Freddy's 3. But in Ultimate Custom Night, oh my god, they look like trash in this game. Not only is there no movement going on, but it's but it's just there it's just a, an image of their face fading away. Nothing else. But that's not the worst. The absolute worst jump scare in this entire game is Wither Golem Freddy's jump scare. Don't believe me? Just take a look at his gameplay and you'll find out. You see what I mean? There's absolutely nothing going on in, in this jump scare. All it is is a picture of his floating head and the FNAF 2 screen playing over. That's it. Now some will say, oh but, go but, oh, but the original Golem Freddy's jump scare was a still image and Nightmare Nightmarian's jump scare was a still image too. 
Well, that may be the case, but there was a big difference between those jump scares and this one. Those jump scares were actually creepy. Golden Freddy's jump scare in the original game was, was creepy not just because he was in your face, but it was all distorted and it was occupied by that really creepy distorted screen, which is actually a slowed down version of the original FNAF screen, and Nightmare and Nightmare's kill screens were creepy because they were in your face and they were distorted, and it was also coupled with that distorted noise I was playing over. That's why those kill screens worked, because they all had something that Golden Freddy's UCN one doesn't have. It was creepy, but with this jump scare, it's not creepy, it's not distorted, and it just looks extremely lazy. Now look, I understand that Ultimate Custom Night is one of the biggest games Scott ever created, and therefore he would have to cut some corners in the game to make it run properly, and one of those cut corners would have been to make the jump scares smaller scaled, and scale them up in, in, during coding, and th that's why the jump scares look a little fuzzier in the game, but that doesn't mean he couldn't have added character animation within those frames. It's not the character animation themselves that take up space, it's the overall file size of the animation and the frames within them. And within those frames, he could have added animation, but he didn't. Alright, I got that name. alright, I talked about the jump scares, but what else is wrong? Well, there isn't much, but I kinda- and this is just me being nitpicky, I kinda wish that there was more references in the cameras outside of the office. Like, I feel like Scott didn't go far enough to create a pizzeria filled with a bunch of memories. And like, and I also wish that there were more cameras in this game. I mean, this is an ultimate custom night after all. But that was that, that was the done to save memory, most likely. But everything else is very minor, really. Not like how Mango's endo head is missing throughout her gameplay, how Toy Chica's irises are missing throughout gameplay as well, how Toy Freddy's foot is still visible when his AI isn't set, and the fact that Jacko Chica and Nightmare Chica's third row of endo teeth is missing as well. Well, those are all extremely minor, and I don't think the casual player would notice those details. So yeah, the gameplay in Ultimate Custom Night is great, but it has flaws that add up. Alright, now that I've talked about the gameplay, let's talk about the music in this game. And I gotta say that the music is probably some of the best we've heard from the FNAF series. For every run you do, there's a different type of track. Leon Reskin, I think that's how you pronounce it, does a really good job on composing a soundtrack for Finds of Freddy's. I mean, he did a good job with Watcher 6 and Sister Location, and he made a bunch of memorable tracks in Finds of Freddy's 6, and he really outdid himself with the soundtrack. My favorite tracks in this game are Sleep No More, Where Dreams Die, and especially the main menu theme. And, and there's also a victory music in this game, like from Sister Location, and while this while the Sister Location victory music in that game was lit, this one is fire. The, the way the clock takes and the music starts gets you pumped. And it definitely feels accomplished once you've been in a challenge that you've had a hard time doing. And it's very satisfying to listen to. And, and, and as dumb as some of the cutscenes are, the music in, in, in those cutscenes is pretty good as well. Before I wrap up this review, I want to talk about one thing which is one of the reasons why this game was hyped back then. The new voices and recurring voices. Everyone was probably very hyped to see their, to see their favorite characters finally get their official voices. And to keep this review short, I'm going to be brief about some of them. Foxy's voice is pretty much what I expect him to sound like, so his voice is fine. Toy Freddy's voice might annoy some people, but I could be a bit more forgiving towards it as he is meant to be an animatronic design for kids. And his and that goofy voice does kind of fit his physical design, and I just like his voice. And I'll give it this, at least his voice is easy on the ears unlike Toy Bonnie's. I kind of expected Amber Lee Connors to reprise her role as Toy Chica because her voice in FNAF World was admittedly okay. And while Toy Chica's voice doesn't have that enthusiastic tone that she had in FNAF World, the voice itself is still pretty good and still manages to sound cute as well. Mangle's voice is as perfect as it can be, in my opinion. Wither Chica's voice effects do make sense, though she is a bit hard to understand, and the voice itself is alright. Wither Bonnie's voice isn't as good as Wither Chica, in my opinion. Yes, the effects make sense, but his voice it's, but the voice itself doesn't really fit him, and he does and he, and he should have sounded a bit a little cartoony though. Puppet's voice is alright, I guess. I mean, it does sound creepy, so it's fine. Nightmare Freddy's voice sounds like something something from Star Wars, in my opinion, but it still sounds pretty good. Nightmare Fredbear's voice definitely sounds haunting and fitting at the same time. Nightmare's voice is what I expect it to be, so it's fine. Jacko Chica's voice is good, though it's a little rough on the ears. 
Nightmare Nightmarian's voice is the very definition of the devil's voice, and it's and it's awesome. Nightmare BB's voice is a bit unnecessary because we all we already knew what he sounded like in FNAF 4, and this voice would would have been more suitable for Plus Trap in my opinion. The voice itself isn't bad; it just doesn't really fit Nightmare BB that well. Funtime Foxy's voice is probably my least favorite. Not because it's bad, but the overall megaphone makes his voice very underwhelming in my opinion. If it didn't have the megaphone effect, it would have been better. And the reason why I'm a bit more forgiving towards it is because, well, Funtime Foxy has a voice changer, so this is only one of her voices. Happy Frog's voice might be a little annoying, but it does fit. Mr. Hippo's voice is definitely pleasant to listen to, and definitely sounds like someone you would want to have a conversation with, even if he never shuts the you-know-what up. Pigpatch's voice is pretty good, and he definitely knows how to play a banjo. Nightbear's voice is, is, a, is a bit unexpected, but, it, but I do think it fits. Orville's voice is pretty much what I expected to sound like, though I kind of wish that the, that the commanding tone was a bit more, more strong. Rockstar Freddy's voice is alright, I guess. I mean, there's not much I can say about it, though he does sound like a friendly animatronic and something from my kid's restaurant. Rockstar, Rockstar Bonnie's voice is a little bit much. I mean, I get what Scott was going for with the effects, but they're just too much. Other than that, the voice itself is fine. Rockstar Chica's voice is definitely my least favorite. Not because it's bad, but because it does not fit her at all, and it's also a bit annoying to listen to, in my opinion. Rockstar Fro Foxy's voice is alright, though, like Orville, the delivery of his lines could have been stronger. Music Man's voice is perfect, in my opinion. Funtime Chica's voice definitely sounds cute, but there's not really much to it, as it's pretty much Becky Shrimpton doing bon Bonbon's voice, except doing it in a more mature way. Lefty's voice is kinda what I expect it to be, as he does have the puppet within him. And I'm not gonna say much about the recurring voices, as they do do a good job with their respective roles. And with that, that is my review of Ultimate Custom Night. And what do I think of it? I think it definitely holds up to its name. Ultimate Custom Night has, some, has a great soundtrack, a good atmosphere, some good replay value, and some decent throwbacks here and there. However, the cutscenes are a big disappointment, the jump scare quality is all over the place, and some characters in this game do go to waste with their mechanics. But other than that, this is still a really fun and good game. If you want a, a good start to a FNAF game without paying any money, then definitely go with Ultimate Cousin Knight. You'll definitely have a lot more fun with that with this game than Special Delivery. But even though I like Ultimate Custom Night, I don't think it's the best FNAF game. There are some people that do, but personally, I just don't see it that way. The, the game just becomes average for people who take the smaller issues more seriously. If I were to rate this game, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Ultimate Custom Night is, the def is, is definitely the Super Smash Ultimate of the franchise. Alright guys, that's all I gotta say for today, and I'm gonna let the, my outro take it from here. Hey guys, it's Andrew John Hunter here, just here to say, I hope you all enjoyed the video I've made, give it a big thumbs up if you liked it, and if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button, don't forget to share this with your friends, and also, if you want to get instant access to any video I upload, just hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button, and that way, you won't miss out on any future uploads. Okay guys, that's all I gotta say for now, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!